I'm Camille, and as always, we have Aaron, Steve, and Malik joining me, and we're talking all things E3, because I mean, why not? <laughs> is E3 going on right now? Yeah, yeah E3 is happening. like this little conference or something that happens, so we're going to cover it. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> just a disclaimer for this squadcast um my pc broke uh, i usually run the squadcast on my end here so i'm running it off a laptop we're gonna see how this goes worst case scenario we'll probably go audio only but we're trying our best here and we appreciate uh, everybody for tuning in and you know let us know what your thoughts are on E3. And speaking of thoughts, let me go over what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about the Ubisoft Forward um, presentation. We're going to be talking about the Xbox and Bethesda showcase. I know everyone's excited about that. We'll also be talking Square Enix and, you know, maybe trickle in anything else that we missed there. So if you have thoughts on those topics, let us know in chat. Let us know on Twitter as well, at Squad State. Let's start off with Ubisoft Forward. Now, this one, what were, I can't even remember, what were our expectations going in? Because I know Steve took notes last time when we had predictions. I did. And Steve, I'm guessing you have those notes there. So as we go through the episode today, you're going to be like, all right, you were totally wrong, Camille. Shut it <laughs> um, on that prediction. So I'm looking forward to those. But Ubisoft Forward, they showed a lot of Far Cry before this presentation. And I think going into it, yeah. everybody was kind of like, what are they going to show? Um, mm -hmm. So let's start off with Steve, actually. What was your favorite thing? Or do you want to start Ooh. off with some unexpected announcements that we saw from the Ubisoft Forward? Yeah, we can. Uh, I mean, it was hard to say because going into this, even last week we were talking about an end I think I was on the opposite end of you guys, where you guys were like, okay, yeah, Ubisoft's going to come out with a whole bunch of surprises. I was a little more tepid in saying that. I was like, they have so much on the go that we already know of. I feel like they have to just continuously give us updates on those games. And I feel for the yeah. most part, that's what they did. Yeah. With the obvious exception of two games, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, which came at like the tail end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. However, unfortunately, Nintendo kind of just stole the thunder on one of those announcements mere hours before Ubisoft got to go live. So I always feel bad for them. It feels like they can't go an E3 without having something leak out. And yeah. That was unfortunate. Rough. But Rough. yeah, between Mario and Rabbit's uh, Sparks of Hope and obviously the Avatar game, I feel like those yeah. were the two standout surprises. But uh, I mean, there were some other cool things announced. It just didn't didn't surprise me, it didn't take me, take me aback. But uh, yeah, how about you guys? I uh, I actually really liked that Riders Republic game. Mm -hmm. That looked really sweet. Yeah. That looked like a lot of fun, to be honest. And I just remember, like, I, I was watching the UB Forward on the go, and just I kept looking, like, glancing down at my phone, like, oh my god, like, what is this? Yeah. And as soon as I got home, I got to check out the trailer and just like get to see a little more from this game. And to be honest, like, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I do want to play this. It's uh, all the fun of going outdoors without having to actually do it. Like, it's just <laughs> the dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but like seriously, it, it looks like a ton of fun, and I'm really interested, and I might end up getting it. Well, and I'm glad it's it's really nice because I like sports games like this, but mm. they're not something that I'm going to sit down and play hours of. It also sucks that up until this point, you had to have a, a dirt biking game. You had to have a snowboarding game. You yeah. Had have, like, you had to have all these little games just to get the full experience. And they were very smart in kind of saying, you know what? Screw that. Let's just put all these different extreme sports together and just see what happens. And I think that they ran with the chaos super well. And like Riders Republic coming into this press conference wasn't that excited about coming out of it. I'm I'm so excited for that game because that will be like my fun arcadey game that I can jump into and go from snowboarding to mountain yeah. biking yeah. to prep packing. Like it it that took me by surprise more than the avatar game mm -hmm. i i agree that that, that we'll, we'll talk about that <laughs> avatar game in a sec but i agree that like yeah riders republic is just one of those games where it's like you may not be sitting there playing it for five six hours at a time right but it's one of those games where even if you're sitting there and you're playing for an hour at a time you're gonna have like a real like good amount of fun with yeah. it for yeah. that hour or two hours you know it feels like they came out with steep but like I think 2016, 2017, and they're like, how can we make this a lot more fun? Yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah, Steep yeah. was Steep was so focused on like 
the with the winter sports that they were like okay well now we can kind of learn from this and start implementing even more into it and yeah like you said Malik, like it just covers such a such a wide array of different sports that you, you never find anymore yeah i agree and i mean if camille do you have anything to add on writers republic uh, I, no, I it, it, to oh, you do. Okay, I want to hear what you want to say. I just thought it looked nice. Yeah. Like, looks like a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I Watch Dogs is continually okay. becoming the game that nobody asked for and nobody wants. Whoa! Oh. whoa, whoa. Come Come yourself, the buddy. shots Be have been yourself. fired. They could, they could do so many great things with this game. And and they're like, Aiden Pierce DLC. Okay, cool. The <laughs> Bloodlines. Like, it's, I don't want a zombie game out of Watch Dogs. Like, yeah. it, it feels weird. I feel like that game is becoming like this menagerie of different ideas without having any real like focus or purpose. Okay. Well, yeah, Bloodline is separate from the zombie DLC, is it not? It, it is, from my understanding of Bloodline. Yeah, because this is just like bringing back Aiden and Wrench, two characters, you know. Right. I, I enjoy, like, I seeing Aiden back and seeing Wrench especially back in the fold. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. They're building out this universe. They're giving us context of, like, what these characters have been doing and actually making them feel like they matter uh, by bringing them back into the fold. I'm excited to see more of this. I mean... I really like Watch Dogs, though. I, I love the aesthetic of Legion, that cyberpunk-esque futuristic world. I, I really yeah. dig, but uh, I know it's not for everyone. But yeah, like, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm more on... Legion is a good, solid game. Sorry to cut you off, but I, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't disagree with that, Steve. I think that Watch Dogs Legions on its own is a great game with a lot of ambition. It's just all the extra stuff I'm sure. confused about. Yeah, no, oh, for sure. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think I'm more on your side on this, Malik, in that, like... You know, Watch Dogs Legion was was kind of the the final attempt for uh, for Ubisoft with this franchise sure. because, you know, the first Watch Dogs game that that was a whole debacle and that started to create this large conversation about when games are revealed at E3 yeah. and how good they look versus what they end up looking at launch. Mm -hmm. And then Watch Dogs Two came out and I think most people were pleasantly surprised with it from what I understand, but it wasn't like a knockout the way right. that maybe Ubisoft was hoping to have like a big comeback or a resurgence for the franchise. And now they come out with Watch Dogs Legion. And, and to be honest, I've just completely lost interest in the franchise and just oh. in these games in general. I do agree with you, Steve, that this is a cool world and a really cool concept. And it's something that absolutely on paper sounds like it works and it could yeah. be a ton of fun to play. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if for me, at least in my personal opinion, uh, if Ubisoft has really delivered or executed on that concept as well as I had hoped. Mm. which is fair I, I i can see i can see from both sides yeah absolutely yeah for me i feel like which watchdogs i would want to just see more go into the core game um rather mm. than these yeah. you know kind of what malik was saying these expansions that seem like they're kind of all over the place like we you know right. we're trying to figure out where they fit in um so for me like watchdogs you know hey if that's your cup of tea steve enjoy it i'm glad that you're getting more content for it <laughs> but for me i was excited for rainbow six extraction um, oh, yeah. that yeah, looked yeah. insane looks pretty sweet yeah so this is is this just kind of like a spin-off of rainbow six uh was it siege, siege. or yeah. is this its own game or or is it maybe both mm -hmm. both so oh, okay yeah so from what I gather is that, yeah, it's its own self-contained thing, but they're taking some of the heroes and stuff like the that out of Siege yeah. and into, yeah, operators into extraction. Yeah. Okay. So and what is, is stuff it, like that. Okay. I guess, I mean, like, that is pretty cool. Yeah, I remember being pretty, like, surprised by it when they initially revealed this. Mm -hmm. And then now that we got to see a little more of it, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm looking forward to this, too. Well, it just adds this. a new level of, sorry, Malik, um, it just offers a oh, new God. level of, like, gameplay, right? You have what makes Siege so yeah. special, the whole breaching system with their different operators and all the gadgets that you get, coming into, like, this zombie infection experience. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I'm interested in playing alongside friends in, in that aspect. Right. 
Yeah. 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 It looks like they took the best pieces of the division and the best pieces of Rainbow Six Siege and yeah. just combined them. And like, because for me, the division, the Dark Zones were the best part. Mm-hmm. Getting with yeah. your friends and like just going in and like fighting these really hard NPCs and just getting deeper and deeper for the better loot. And mm. the whole, I will say, what what sold me on this was the fact that you can spend all this time building up an operator, getting them all this gear, all these yeah. like abilities, and then lose them. Yeah. And then you can't play that operator until you go back in with your friends and get them out. Because that is so much cooler than just, oh, we have an operator that's, you know, down in the depths, you need to go retrieve them, and then you unlock a new operator. Right. It seems kind of like a reverse of that, where it's like, here's these operators, don't lose them. Yeah, yeah I, I do like that system as well. It ends up being a lot of fun in that, like, yeah, you have that intensity. You know, you, you've built up your operator, you upgrade him, get all the cool gear for them, and you, you don't want to mess up. You want to make sure you are a pro when you're going into every single mission. So I think that is a cool, like, it just adds to the experience, just like you were saying, Malik. And I feel like it's... And also, I think it... Go sorry, ahead, Camille, Steve. Please. No, I was just going to say, I, I feel like it also gives agency to all the players so that... Yeah, um, unlike Siege, where you can just go in, play a casual game, and not really care about the strategy or anything like that, and just drop out afterwards. There's mm. there's nothing to it, right? This one actually gives you that agency of like, no, I have to go in with friends or with randoms and actually care about what I'm mm. doing here. Coordinate with friends because otherwise your progress is just lost. Yeah, so I feel like it just builds that better because it is entirely uh, PVE. Like you have to play with people and that have to actually you know care Mm -hmm. instead of just it it being a toss away thing yeah Yeah. but to that right because i was gonna say something that's a little bit of the opposite where i feel like extraction is not as intimidating for someone who knows nothing about siege so for more of a casual gamer or someone who's just not familiar with rainbow six siege they're more likely i feel to drop in to extraction because they're playing alongside their friends and not necessarily against yeah. another team yeah you which is fair yeah really competitive yeah so that, there's gonna be yeah. this really cool balance because they talked about uh how sledge can break through walls yes what happens when you know you're the one who has the best said sledge in your squad and now you can't take previous routes that you were used to and you kind of adapt that is one of the cool things because that destructibility of rainbow six siege plays into the tactical side of that game Mm -hmm. so well and when you look at almost like a dungeon crawler which kind of what extraction like extractions is almost a rogue light dungeon crawler because (laughs) every time you go in it's gonna be different and that is so cool because i personally never got into siege because every time i played i would get shot through a wall blown up somehow (laughs) like it is a hard game and this yeah. looks like a nice little entry level and guess what once you get your seed legs and extractions you might want to go test out siege and play with your friends that's true yeah yeah I agree. yeah a lot of crossover potential i think it just goes to show like how how well this paid off for ubisoft to commit and stick with siege because you have to remember that game came out with you know lukewarm reception and yeah. they stuck with it yeah siege, siege is such a comeback story because yeah. you're right steve like that game came out with quite a bit of issues mm-hmm. off launch and a lot of people were like uh, i don't know this might be another dud for ubisoft and they just mm-hmm. never gave up on it and i think that's kind of become a bit of a business model for them and you're seeing a bit of that in watchdogs legion is that even though people weren't going crazy over the game, they're going to continue to support it, continue to add updates, new content, and all sorts of fun stuff for people who are enjoying it. And then over time, anybody who maybe saw it at launch and wasn't interested is going to see how much content's been added since then and want to jump in. With Rainbow Six Siege, of course, it was a bit of a different scenario in that the esports side is what ended up That's yeah. creating such longevity. But it's just cool to see that Ubisoft has a bit of that business model where they just they don't want to give up on games right away they want to give it a their best go and it's worked out in most cases yeah Yeah. and 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 we've seen studios who do the opposite right who just give up on titles that just needed a little bit more love um but with Mm. ubisoft and siege for instance it's like that's our true example of how the community made a franchise um and made really a whole scene um for that for Ubisoft to really invest in. So I'm excited for Extraction. I I don't know if the competitive scene would be really into Extraction though. So it'll be interesting how the no. community, um, you know, 
or the audience there who they are for extraction rather than it is for, mm. you know, obviously Siege. I can see yeah. the the people who play Siege a lot maybe want to jump in to try it out because it's just like a why not type of scenario. Right. Um, and especially like if they've leveled up their operators, they can have a lot of fun in that aspect. But um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of people who are playing Siege, it, it, this is just not the reason they're playing Rainbow Six. They're looking for the PvP experience, the competitive experience. And Extraction looks like fun, but mm -hmm. it's probably not something that's really geared towards them. Kind of what you were saying earlier, Camille. This is for the more casual audience, people who have potentially been turned away from Rainbow Six Siege to see something like this that's just PvE focused where you can play with your friends and have fun it might be more geared towards them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is going to be their war zone. They, you know, they have mm -hmm. that really heavy competitive mm -hmm. style. This is them being able to make a battle Royale type game without having to make an actual battle Royale. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And also just, just too, forgetting about hyperscape like that. Huh? I, I see how it is. <laughs> I oh, well, to forget about hyperscape. Um, <laughs> but also, too, Rainbow Six Siege is getting crossplay and cross progression, and I'm really hoping yeah. that that carries over. Um, because if you can play extractions with your friends on any system, and you can carry that progression with you, that's going to be something that really like ties that game together as a great experience. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Camille, you wanna you wanna take us into the next uh, portion of the Ubisoft because the big one the big one. Oh wait wait I wanted to talk about the Mario oh. um, Sparks of Hope oh, right. oh, for okay. a bit because they have like okay so rabbits obviously they're a thing right um, but then minions. they decided to cross the rabbits with the Lumas and my brain mm -hmm. can't unsee it does the Sparks kind of weird out anyone else like they have rabid faces but they're lumas it's so weird to me um <laughs> like i don't know why i was just super focused on that throughout the whole presentation of that game i cannot get it out of my head it's like i don't know if i love it or if i want nothing to do with it it's and kind I, of terrifying. Yeah, yeah, it's a little terrifying. It's like the effect. I think it's also the way that they set it up, in, in that you saw the back of back of the Luma, and then it it turns, and it's just it's almost it's just disgusting. a rabbit face. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then you're like, whoa, that's a rabbit. Was not expecting yeah. that at all. So yeah, yeah, no that that was that's very weird for me. But um, also with that game, I do think like the the rabbits always bring something really special because they're like more attitudey than any of like the Mario characters. Upset, except yeah. for maybe like the Kooplings. They're the Kooplings have a lot of attitude, sure. um, as well. So I'm looking forward to like Rosalina, uh, the rabbit for Rosalina. She was giving mm. all the tood. She did not care in the world to help out. <laughs> Um, so I'm really looking forward to this game. But how do you guys feel about the whole partnership with the Nintendo and Ubisoft? I think it's it. great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think this extends past just a partnership with like Ubisoft and Nintendo. It's just Nintendo partnering with multiple developers. We saw that with like Cadence of Hyrule. Mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo just seems to be going after the best developers for their games. And it works out. Look, we got a sequel. Yeah, and Steve, that that's kind of like the main takeaway for this for me. It's that Nintendo's finally like starting to step out of their shell, yeah. step out of their little bubble, and start bringing people in. And they're doing it in such a way that I think is not only going to shock people, but sets the precedent that they're not afraid to do something crazy. Because yeah. every Rabbids game to me has felt like a fever dream. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, you though. You're right. Little bit of crazy. The best way of <laughs> putting it yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting um you know because they also had that partnership with starlink remember starlink and then um, oh, star true. fox was in there so i wonder outside yeah. of the mario rabbits collab where else we would see this nintendo and ubisoft partnership go so this knowing that they're continuing that partnership makes me hopeful that we'll see something great um from that company Aiden Pierce for smash Ezio. <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say Ezio for smash <laughs> Ezio, imagine like just doing a stealth, boring a stealth kill. No, Ezio is not boring. Whoa, whoa, no, whoa. No, I was talking about Aiden Pierce. Aiden oh. Pierce. Oh, no. yeah. hold, on, hold on, hold on. Guys, <laughs> guys, we're missing the obvious. Sam Fisher appears in everything else but oh, a Splinter Cell I game. It makes sense. 
I can't, uh, I can't, I don't I can't know if you guys just heard the, the loud no. thunder that just cracked outside my window. That was pretty wild. But yeah, I don't know what the hell. Okay. <laughs> Ubisoft. Right? Yo! What's going on? <laughs> How many UB forwards, E3s, do we have to go through where we are disappointed yet again yeah. that they're not making or not announcing another Splinter Cell game? There's a Netflix Splinter There's Cell a, show. It, it, Why uh, is we, there we not talked a about game? this. We talked about this last week yes. where Ubisoft just finds a way to, to announce something that involves Sam Fisher that Without isn't another Splinter Cell game. You yes. know, and they've done it like consistently, like every I was, single year. I'll tell you, I'll set you guys up a scene. I was on the edge of my couch during the portion where Yves Gaumont comes on, on the screen and he's talking, he's, and he's going on and on. I was like, this is the moment yeah. you got, you got the head of Ubisoft on screen. Yeah. He's going to announce Sam Fisher. No, <laughs> no, of course it's not. Uh, honestly, at this point, even if the game is so far off, like I, I'm it. surprised they haven't. I'm surprised they haven't done like just like a just a cinematic. Yeah. Just give yeah. me the uh, you know Camille. I think it was you who was talking about it last week. Just give me the sound of the night vision goggles. The three yeah. dots, and then that's, that's, that's it. Need. Just yeah. just do that for me, and and you don't even need to say it. it's similar. Like what happened with Todd Howard during Bethesda's showcase. I can't remember what year it was when they had honestly. I think like the best showcase of that year when 2019, yeah. it was 2018 or 2019, probably 2018. I think when probably. yeah. When they just said, like, hey, we know you guys want to know if it's happening or not. So, like, yeah. yes, it's happening. Elder Scrolls 6 is happening. It's happening, yeah. You won't see it for a long time, right. but, yeah. but we're it's making happening. it. Yeah, you and know, they did I the think... same with Fable, too. Like, they did that with two announcements. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Perfect Dark. Yeah. Yeah, Perfect, Perfect Dark. Dark, Mass Effect. And we'll get yeah. into Mass those Effect titles because yeah. they did touch upon it, too. But it's, yeah, it's disappointing to see, you know, Ubisoft not giving the fans what they want to hear. And, you know, if it isn't development, it will really be like, why couldn't you tell us earlier we were waiting so long? It's kind of like yeah. there being the Hideo Kojima um, of, publi of publishers and developers. They're just doing that. Uh, I, they're taking I, his I, lessons. I wonder if just the big reason for them is because it's so far off. They don't want to do it. They don't want to put themselves in a position where they announce it. And every year people expect that like they're going to get an update on it. Right. Maybe. Um, maybe. Because but then maybe. I also I also wonder if this is going to blow up in their face at some point where we all know inevitably a Splinter Cell game is going to come yeah. out. But after all this time, all this secrecy, all this teasing by having Sam Fisher and all these other games and properties, yeah. mm. if that game doesn't come out and exceed expectations, I wonder like... That's well, it's kind too, of like yeah. the situation where Xbox is in now with Halo, um, and we'll talk more about Halo. Exactly, yeah. Um, but like teasing mm. that there, there's a Halo game coming out and then, you know, people getting that look at it and it's just not living up to what their standard is. But, you know, I want to move on because we have so much to talk about. Sure. Um, other things that oh, Ubisoft... Yeah. One thing, Camille. Oh, you, we're talking Ubisoft. I just want to say yeah, this yeah. really quick. I have never been more excited over a, a box in my entire life i know it wasn't like the ubisoft press conference i know but kojima and that director's cut and like i've never flipped out over a box so much in my life we can move yes. on i just i just had to say that that hurt my heart so much yes it is it did hurt my heart a lot um we talked i actually i didn't tell you but yeah <laughs> so was, more death was... stranding more Death Stranding. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, director's Cut. Let's go. But I want to talk Kojima about Ubisoft. Cut. Kojima Cut. Um, they also announced a few interesting things because Ubisoft is one of those studios where they're really experimenting with their content and their games. So they they talked yep. about Rocksmith Plus, which is going to mm -hmm. be yep. allowing electric Absolutely. guitars pretty much to play That's cool. Rocksmith um, without... Yeah any like cables or anything or like i don't know how that's gonna work but that looks interesting to me we got to talk about their the stuff that they're doing so mythic quest is coming back uh to tv yep. they're also in sorry on yeah mythic quest yeah. is second season did they say it's live yeah so it, yeah season. oh yeah it's almost over oh wow wow no. wow so it's coming yeah. back um as well so it looks like that that's probably gonna be a long-running series for them on apple tv yeah i imagine and then also on Apple TV, which looked really interesting to me, Werewolves Within. How'd you guys feel yeah. about the trailer yeah. for that show? It looks funny. I mean, it's got like, I don't know, it just looks interesting. I thought uh, it was whatever. 
it's like, a, it's like a scary movie, but for the uh, like the scary. Yeah, movie movies, that's the vibe. Yeah. That's sure. I like. That. Like, I'm okay with that, and I would be fine with that rather than people trying to make serious video game movies. Like, yeah, if you're just parody true. video games, like why not? It, it's like good popcorn content. You know, you sit on the couch, watch that for an hour, and go to bed. Yeah, and I, I like feel... that they were self aware enough to say that this is an adaptation of a game you've never heard of. Because that was yeah. that was my feelings exclusively. I was like, are they just trolling us? Like, there's no way this is a real <laughs> Ubisoft game, right? Yeah. But it, I, I mean, like yeah. the fact that they're keeping a distance from their franchises that they already have. Like, imagine if mm-hmm. they were to create. You know, I know they're doing the Splinter Cell animated animated series, but imagine if they were to create something based off far cry right we're gonna be much right. more um looking at that with a magnifying glass judging it it's every move That's true. so i like the fact that they're kind of going this way with these random series that that look decent um i've caught a little bit of mythic quest i enjoyed it uh so yeah and then the final one which Good. i think no one oh the big the one big just one. dance 2022 <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> yo do not oh, knock man, just dance so i have chill. fun i have fun with just dance okay end of an era it's not coming to we i mean oh i know moment of silence for all, all this still hoping out for the we release right. depression <laughs> yeah they're not gonna see it here uh but yeah. who asked for the avatar frontiers of pandora game what I would have asked for this, I don't know, when okay, the movie so, came out. So uh, picture this, right? I'm I'm I wasn't home during the UB forward, so I wasn't okay. able to watch all of it live. I tried yeah. to catch some of it on the go and then I ended up just catching up on stuff when I got back, right? I heard and I saw on Twitter that there was an Avatar game announced. Mm-hmm. Oh, and in my head, I'm here like Oh my God, Avatar, like the last airbender. And I'm like, oh, that's so exciting. (laughs) Like, this could be so much fun. There's like so much in that world. And then I get Mm. home and I see the trailer and I'm like, oh, it's the James Cameron movie, Avatar. Right. That made a lot of money, but is uh, probably the most forgettable film, maybe of all time, ever. Oh, you it's, actually believe uh, yeah. one of those things? Though it's such a video gamey ass movie. Like, yeah, it, the Avatar world is so video gamey. It, it just makes sense. And with James Cameron wanting to make a million of these movies every two to right. three years, there you know that they're going to do it as a games as service, and there's going to be all these kinds. Oh, of you think? Oh, one hundred percent. There is yeah. there is no way that you we don't get a very small portion of Pandora, and then when the next movie announces, they say, oh look, we got this DLC for this new area of Pandora. Mm. This is what's going oh. on. You can get all this cross-reference yeah. content. It's going to happen. Yeah. It, it, I can see the writing on the wall. And mm. it's unfortunate because I think it's going to hold back the game in a lot of ways. I think that they are going to be too worried about that cross-integration to promote the movies. And, I mean, let's be honest. Was this game really going to do well in the first place on its own? I'm just blown away by the fact that we got the announcement of an Avatar game before Before we we even saw, like, a second of footage from the (laughs) second movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, (laughs) what is happening? It's so weird. Um, And so is this meant to be first person then? It's a first person shooter. Yeah. Oh, okay. But that's my issue, because. Okay, if I'm thinking Avatar, if I was tasked with making an Avatar game to obviously coincide with the movies, I would first think VR because what makes Avatar special Mm -hmm. is how gorgeous it looks, right? Um, You know, when you sit in a movie theater. So, like, imagine going into Pandora in VR. That'd be sick. If I couldn't do that, then maybe what I do, like... uh, MMORPG style, like, in that world, right? Like, I don't know... If you can't do the graphics to that level, you have to make the world expansive where you could pretty much do anything you want in that world. To, to be honest, maybe I'm maybe I'm alone on this, but hear me out. Sure. I think any game that's action adventure and isn't a straight up FPS like competitive should be third person. The man I don't said it. I, I'm, I, I'm I don't with you on, for the most part. Yeah. I just don't see how, like, uh, for me, I, I don't have as much fun in a first person, like, yeah, like right. Cyberpunk. I, I All I was thinking about when I was playing Cyberpunk, even though I, I did end up getting into it, was like, 
oh, I wish this was third person. Did you especially like, with how much you get to customize? I don't know. Like, imagine yeah. you get to customize your own Navi and like make your own yeah. character, you know, and you get to like see the way that your character progresses. But like, what about like I think Bioshock? That's the big part is it limits it limits your customization. Uh, uh, Camille, you were talking about you know going into this world and everything. I was like, I don't really care about exploring this world. <laughs> if I'm there, I want. To, you know, but that's but that's just me. Like I, I've I've sat through the movie. I just don't find that place very interesting. But what I would find interesting is if I'm collecting like new armor, new mm. new weapons, and everything. But it's, if it's first person, I'm not even seeing that on my person, right? Yeah, kind of like and, cyberpunk. It, it just and, diminishes that that customization. And there. I know there are examples like Camille just said Bioshock. I will mm -hmm. say though, for something like Bioshock and very recently the Resident Evil series, something like first person can work because of the immersiveness and how right. like sucked into the world you get because you essentially become the character. So when something busts around the corner or something yeah. scary happens, it, like it hits, like the impact is just heavier right mm -hmm. um i don't know and there may be other examples that people are going to bring up that that would prove me wrong i'm not saying that like you know that i'm right and everyone else is wrong i just think the better experience that you get out of an action adventure game is when it's in third person your spider-man's uncharted's the last of us like horizon. the list goes on and on you know wait sorry what'd you say Molly? horizon like horizon, horizon the, yeah horizon forbidden west looked better than horizon uh, ghost tsushima like it just it just goes on and on and on and i think there's like the third person experience for me is way more fun than the first person and especially with the game like avatar yeah. where the characters and the designs and the world is is a character in and of its own mm -hmm. and so if i want to be like a navi if i want to be someone who lives in the like pandora who lives on pandora I want to be able to see my character and see what I look like, customize my character in some way, have that be available to me. And I feel like just it being first person, it takes just a little bit away. But maybe what, what I was saying earlier in regards to Resident Evil, in regards to Bioshock, that immersiveness that you get could be why they want it to be first person. Mm -hmm. Fair, because I think that when I don't know the, the world that much, but writing these like dragon creatures or whatever, that right. will most likely look a lot better in first person rather yeah. than third person, yeah. right? Yeah. And control better. Yeah. But interacting with the world and exploring, I don't. I, I kind of agree with you I, that I, I would have preferred to see a third person perspective. Well, and I, I get what you guys are saying. Like, I think I. It's hard for me to say like any action adventure should be third person because I think that's a safe choice. There are games mm -hmm. like we mentioned that do first person really well as an action adventure. So I don't want to say it shouldn't be, but for a game that's taking so much risk for the time it's coming out, it's based on an IP. It does make more sense as a third person game um, because it is the safer mm -hmm. choice um, and more things for you to do.